Now it's recording. So, Samita, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you and okay. see, see Eric on that screen. Hello. Okay. Hello. Okay, I maybe can share the screen so we can. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can yes. see my screen. Okay, I think we can start so we don't get any delays. So, welcome to the IoT Directorate ITF 116 pre meeting. Uh, notes that this meeting is aligned with the NotWell. Our draft agenda, uh, basically we will have an overview of the ITF and RTF IoT groups. And then, uh, well, new plan ITF and IRTF activities. And Samita will give us an update on 5G Asia. And then other IoT SDO updates, if people want to provide some information. Any comments on the agenda? Okay. So please add your name in the attendance list. Uh, so for 60ish, Pascal, do you want to comment? 60ish is stuck and probably will not relieve. So the, the intent is to, to close it, I guess. It's, there was some proposed work uh, recently during the, since the last ATF, but I don't think it's convincing enough. And I don't think that we have um, basically enough people still interested in working in 6 dish so so I guess we just let it be, let it go. Okay, thank you. Comments or questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, six low, Carles. Yes, uh, six low will meet in the next ITF, and since the last meeting we have the new RFC 9354, which is IPv6 over PLC. Currently, we have five working group documents. Uh, one is in the RFC editor queue, that's IPv6 over NFC. And the use cases draft is uh, in ISG evaluation, and it's been updated. So currently, there are no remaining discussed ballots for this document. And then there are three other working group documents. One is the IPv6 ND multicast address listener registration, which is pending the Shepherd write up. And there are two more recently adopted working group drafts, uh, which are the path aware semantic addressing, PASA for low power and lossy networks, which includes stateless forwarding, header compression for rather stable topologies, and the transmission of SHIC compressed packets over 15.4 networks, where SHIC is the main product of the LP1 working group. And there are two active individual documents, also a, a document which is a companion to the PASA draft, which focuses on reliability aspects and also the IPv6 ND prefix uh, registration. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, comment or questions? Okay, thank you. Ace, Daniel, Loganaten. Okay, Anima, Sheng, Turles. Okay, uh, SDF, Michael cannot join. Uh, Niklas? Okay. So, Ines, uh, yes. sorry, the chairs couldn't make it today, but uh, maybe one point, point. So, ASDF is not meeting in Yokohama, but we do have an ASDF focused hackathon uh, oh. at the hackathon. But I, I will talk a bit more about that in the Thing with the RG part. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dominique, for helping with the notes. And Seabor. Uh, Barry, Barry, uh, Christian. Okay, they since that they are not present, but they have had some information. So please read it uh, carefully. And then the core, Jaime, Marco. Hey, this is Marco. Um, Marco. So we have one of the core conf documents really close to past the line now, um, core seed. Uh, that required quite a lot of work, mostly to address um, a remaining discussed ballot and underwent one more 
working group last call, but uh, we should be closed now. And one more document was requested for publication target at. Uh, it defines a registry for target attributes to synchronize uh, for their use with uh, with web linking. Uh, there's a bunch of more working group documents, uh, some quite advanced, waiting for Shepard write up, and three more that passed um, their working group last call. And then you see a list of ongoing activities, and other than the usual suspects uh, and core conf, we have also revived the work on the PubSub architecture for co-op. There's been quite a lot of discussion and early design work on a method based on IPPM work for measuring performance uh, for co-op uh, and also a submission of a proposal to run co-op uh, over Bluetooth. And we'll meet uh, in Yokohama for a two-hour session and we plan to resume our regular interim meetings um, end of April uh, synced with CBOR. Okay, great. Excellent. Thank you very much, Marco. Thank you. Comments, questions? Okay. Kose, Matt? Ivalo? Okay. Deadnet? Low? Ah, Janos cannot attend. He's in a parallel meeting. Hi, everyone. Uh, Hi. Yes, uh, I'm in two meetings, but I can talk to this one. Louis is on vacation. Thank you. Uh, so, the biggest uh, or hottest topic uh, in Deadnet uh, since the last ITF is uh, that we have uh, adopted a new draft. Uh, uh, called uh, scaling requirements, which uh, <clears throat> includes uh, some new requirements uh, on uh, larger networks, uh, more hopes, uh, larger bandwidth, uh, longer uh, cables, and so on. And there have been a number of proposals uh, uh, to define uh, new queuing solutions to address uh, these uh, requirements. And we had uh, Two interims uh, to discuss uh, these proposals on the table, uh, one in December and one in March. And um, actually, uh, we were about to form a design team, but uh, due to the huge interest, uh, we uh, we will just have open working meetings uh, to uh, discuss these topics. This will be kicked off uh, after the upcoming IETF, uh, bi-weekly, uh, every other week. Um, uh, meeting series. So I would say this is the really the hottest topic. Uh, okay, great. We're progressing with some of our uh, <clears throat> drafts, like OEM drafts, uh, uh, the framework, and uh, the MPRS OEM con uh, concluded uh, working group last call. Hey, um, Ian, should, I, uh, should I add these ones too to the notes? Yes, please. Okay, I can do that. Samita? Yeah, I have a question for Ianus. Ianus, um, for this scaling draft um, that we are adopting, where are the applications for it getting it a little bit? So it's been mainly <clears throat> proposed by uh, China Mobile. So it's uh, service provider networks is the area. Okay. I'll take a look at it. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Great. Right, thank you very much. Janos, other questions or comments? Okay. IoT Ops, Alexei, Hank. Okay. Okay. Lake, Melissa, Stephen. Okay. Elwick, Mohit, Zen. Okay, LP1. Oh, sorry, I was um, going to say after, oh, yes. after uh, 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 curve representation gets sent off to the RFC editor, which is just pending some update from Renee, uh, the intent was to close Elwig. So I'll probably ah. be closing Elwig and Sixtish in the, in the coming months. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for the update. So what is the plan with the remaining work items? Do they move to other groups? OT ops, I think, was the recommended Good. area. Yeah, they, they are not necessarily chartered for doing exactly the work that Eric did, but if there is some, some variance, uh, I think we can do that. Uh, well, then, yeah, so before I close the league, I should uh, raise that 
uh, with Warren or or uh, or Rob. So, yeah. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Further comment or questions? Okay. LP one. So, Alex. Uh -huh. yeah. I don't know if Alex is here. I've not seen him. So, um, yes. So, so LP1 is being rechartered and in the process of rechartering, we are changing the name because the old name LP1 really conveyed that we were working on a specific type of network, but now we are taking the chic compression to new usages. And so we, we changed the name of the working group. So really that means we will close LP1 and start chic. That's a new working group. Ah, okay. So the 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 ATF will be will be doing a joint meeting, but after that, I guess it's going to be. Uh, we'll see if, how long it takes to close up your. It's going to be shared meetings with Sheikh and up your, until we close up your. Okay, great. Thank you very much for the update, Pascal. Further comment or questions? Okay. Rats, Kathleen, Nancy, Ned. Okay. Ro, Rick, Eve. Okay. Uh, Roll. Um, uh, well, we are working in the current documents. Uh, we are going to have one slot of one hour on Tuesday. Um, about how they be repaired, we just got some. Uh, issues to fix from the routing directorate. DAO projection is uh, based on the new requirements of the all the routing documents before go to submission of ISG, have to have a routing directorate review and security review, so they are in process on that. MOPEX is uh, ready for working group last call. It will be treated in the Tuesday. Our uh, fast border road uh, class detection in Ripple is ongoing and NCS extension, extension was returned to the working group and um, there are open issues uh, raised by the AEDs. And after that work, we are going to as well start working into this RPL version 2 or Ripple Biz. Comments or questions? Okay, thank you. Sweet, Dave, David, Russ. Okay, Tip. Tiru, Nancy. Okay. RTF, Coin, Jeffrey, Eve, Marie Jose. Okay. Uh, Synthesis Research Group, Ari, Carsten. Yes. So for Synthesis Research Group, we have a set of documents in various stages. Uh, the IoT Edge Challenge and Functions is currently in the IRST review. So looking forward to get that published soon. We did recently adopt two new documents. One is the amplification attacks using co-op and the other one, the taxonomy of operational security considerations for manufacturing install keys and trust anchors. Quite long name and both are of course very much welcoming more reviews. There are two documents that are slowly getting mature and ready for applications. One is the guidance on restful design for Internet of Things systems and the other one is the terminology and processes for initial security setup for IoT devices. For the latter one, we just send a message to the mailing list. We are updating the draft name to update on the on the latest use of, of not using bootstrapping as, as the terminology there. We did organize a summary meeting after the last IETF in December, um, where we focus on security, data models, on part bar on, on STF, and digital twins topics. And you can find more details on the link in the, in the notes. We are not planning to meet at the Yokohama IETF. However, as I mentioned in the beginning, we do have a plan to have, for have an ASD-focused hackathon activity. And there, the idea is to progress some of the implementation efforts in the area of data models, variety device and their interactions, and in particular, to make sure that the STF spec uh, has all the things ready for IESG submission. We do have currently early plans for a summary interim meeting around mid-May, but we still need to have figure out the details on that. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, do you have some action points on digital twins? Uh, sorry, action points? What do you mean? Yeah. Uh, if you have, like, from the interim in December, do you conclude, like, we are going to create this document to this primary uh, statement? So we have a set of activities um, from, from the interim and, and, and since then on the digital twins. I mean, we had this one 
a specific meeting on Digital Twins where we had a joint activity with the Digital Twin Consortium. Um, from there, there is an, an let's say low burner acti activity to figure out what's the best way to continue to discuss with Digital Twin Consortium. But then we have also uh, some Digital Twin focused work using the SDF models for modeling Digital Twins that has been um, presented in the past few meetings. And uh, on that, we are following up with um, this draft in the ASTF working group on on relations and relation information between definitions. Um, so that's the kind of main digital twin focused activities that we have ongoing at the moment in the RG scope. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thanks. Further comment or questions? Hey, Ari, um, is there any draft on those? Um, documents uh, SDF you can you mentioned about digital twin data modeling so nothing specific written down I think the <clears throat> presentations from the uh, in the interim are probably the closest thing you have to a written document um, but that's a good point maybe we should write something down kind of on using SDF or digital twins that, that seems to be a very a recurring topic at the moment so Maybe that's mm -hmm. a worth a draft or something. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, great. Thank you. Further comment or questions? Okay. Uh, about the new plan ITF, IRTF, IoT activities, are you aware of some? That was not mentioned previously. Okay. Uh, Samita, do you want to give us an update on 5G Asia? Sure. Um, let me share from my desk. Yes. I stopped sharing, so you okay. should be able now. Sure. Okay, so can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay, I can see. Good. Um, so uh, Ari and Ines had requested me to talk about um, this uh, consortium. It's about four or five years old. Um, I um, currently, uh, from my work point of view, I'm heavily involved there. Um, however, I haven't seen the, any direct connection from this group. 5G SEIA, it's a 5G SEIA Alliance for Connected Industries and Automation um, with IETF directly, but they um, they are not a specification group. Rather, they take specification, analyze it, analyze, and then give feedback and closely working with 3GPT. Um, they do also work on certain things that uh, I think ha may have impact or may work with um, IETF. Um, for example, um, they have done some analysis of DeckNet recently. Janusz uh, is more involved with that. And you can see um, this is a consortium based on membership. A company membership, but they have um, uh, companies coming from um, communication ICT areas, uh, that means communication and IT companies. Samita, um, you are in the first slide. The slide at no. Yes, yes, I ah, am. Okay. I'm just talking. Um, and ah. then there are uh, folks from the OT industry, that means operational technology industry, industrial companies like uh, Bosch, Siemens, um, Hirschman, Rockwell, and uh, then academics, universities, some of the universities, research institutes. Um, the major objective. For this one, um, this consortium, it was formed around 2017-18 um, as part of uh, Germany's um, ZVEI consortium. ZVEI is a, uh, I'm not too familiar with that uh, full name of the acronym, but they are part of Industry 4.0. 
And um, so the OT industries or the um, industrial companies, they, uh, they, they have a requirement to go to wireless um, completely because um, they, they, they want to modernize their, their systems and they don't want to move uh, around with the cables attached with it. So, uh, for example, they want to share some of the uh, resources on multiple aisles. Um, so basically, say <clears throat> AGVs are uh, predominantly used today in uh, some of the um, shop floors, um, and they want to make uh, reuse them uh, in multiple areas. So that's one example they want to go, and they also want to modernize the tools, use um, the XRVR technologies, digital twins, but those are, were not possible when um, they were uh, just uh, uh, wire connected. Um, but I think there are some challenges like uh, with, uh, time sensitivity um, and then time synchronization, reliability, all these things are challenges with wireless. They have tried or they are trying with Wi-Fi and now they are also trying with uh, 5G. So uh, this is, um, they are mostly, the group is formed to see uh, if um, 3GPP, 5G specs are good enough for the um, OT industry or they need more modification. So this group is uh, basically analyzing the, the specs, uh, doing some test beds um, and providing feedback to, uh, to 3GPP uh, primarily, but they also work with other organizations and we will go over here. Uh, for example, some of the um, OPCF is another, OPC Foundation is another uh, organization they are involved with, uh, defining the interfaces between the 5G system and OPC application system. And the data modeling, they have identified, for example, bringing uh, the digital twin, uh, uh, configuring that and um, bringing uh, the, the digital twin up um, with, the, um, with the 5G network. So, but um, the reason I was asking about a digital twin, but I think they have found some requirements. I believe if you go to 5G-SEIA.org, you might be able to find a white paper on that as well. And um, I believe they're working with IEC um, on those definitions. Um, so I'm now thinking maybe IEC also uses uh, IETF uh, work. Uh, maybe that's how they will be involved or maybe um, some of us could go and we I think most of us have a representative in 5G CIA can pitch some uh, digital modeling. Uh, okay, so this is the definition. I mean, this is how they are working with IoT industry, ICT industry like us, um, I, the IT and communication companies and the OT industry on the other side, industrial side. Uh, and then they have now about 97 members um, we have uh, some representation from US, but not a lot. Many of them are from Europe, Asia, um, and so on. Uh, here is a quick uh, word about their working uh, group structure. They have five working groups um, focused on different things, so, uh, starting with use cases and requirements. Um, and then they have uh, architecture and integration aspects, deployment model. Um, the group two focuses heavily on the regulatory framework, spectrum, availability, 
um, ap application to spectrum mapping, things like that. Um, and then working group five focuses on the test beds. Um, they have some nice test beds um, already, uh, thanks to European Union projects and um, some of the Asian government projects. Um, so all over in Europe and Asia, they have already test beds, multi-company test beds. They, are, they may be linked with some other projects like 5G Smart or um, other uh, European Union uh, funded projects. But here is one example um, uh, that um, they they will be. Uh, I think this is not the slide, but there it's coming. Uh, here we are showing that um, to uh, the use cases and, and uh, analysis and requirements examples. Um, they take the 3GPP primarily essay, and sometimes some of the discussions that we have that can that go go to those goes to the um, ran working groups as well in 3gpp um, but there has been um, multiple documents in 3gpp that have been affected or improved by the 5g <clears throat> cia work um, and liaison statements um, and then uh, private networks. Uh, they, it is a big topic over there because the the um, the industrial companies, meaning you know, smart manufacturing factories, um, oil and gas mi mining, those are basically um, they want to have their own control. They want to have. They feel more secure, more private if they have. Uh, their own um, own network. So um, traditionally, um, they, they, in the 5G solution, they are thinking of having the whole 5G network inside the campus, or <clears throat> there are some breakdowns like control network may decide on the service provider side and the data plane of 5G. Um, is inside. So data, customer data, their customer data never goes out of that premises. And there are uh, several combination of those architecture. Um, and the, the the other one that um, the service provider can control everything. Uh, but then there are some issues with latency uh, and bandwidth. Uh, it becomes too costly, so there it could be like uh, although it's operated by the service provider, the solution could all be brought close to the premises. Um, so, and, it, and there are several options. Network slicing is the uh, is the popular one. Um, so this is um, this is a big topic uh, in the whole industrial area of manufacturing. So I um, shall I go for uh, like two more slides and take questions, or if there is any question, I can answer now. Okay, so I can just uh, go with the slides. So there are some test beds that you can see multi-company test beds, both on the ICT and um, OT side. Um, this is uh, the first top level um, test bed is at uh, uh, EFAC um, and DMAG uh, factories. So you can see those hanging cranes on the ceiling. Um, and AGVs, um, so they this, they are testing some of the performance um, of these um, systems with the 5G network and in their regular day-to-day -day operation. Mostly, um, the latency is in question, latency and um, bandwidth. 
Um, and then the, the, uh, the one that is at the lower level, um, it's also Ericsson Bosch, and it's part of 5G Smart Project. Um, they, it's in the uh, Bosch Semiconductor Factory in Germany. Um, and they are testing a number of things, as you can see, industrial LAN over 5G, TSN over 5G, um, and those AGV activities, like, um, again, those performance uh, KPIs measurement. Um, and 5G ACIA has now oh, reached out to a number of other consortiums around the world, and you can get a view of uh, different parts of the world where they are working with. Um, lots of them are in Asia, and then I see two of them are in India, and uh, also Europe. Um, they have a few organizations in uh, USA as well, including CTIA, MFA, IIC, OPC Foundation. Um, so, I, yeah, so current topics are these industrial age, it's uh, also important topic for them. Uh, how to integrate, how to bring up the devices, how to bring up uh, the system with 5G network. This is their main topic. So, yeah, I'll stop here. And I think you've got some ideas, but I, as I mentioned before, I do not see a direct uh, cross section between IETF and them. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Samita. Nice presentation. Uh, someone have question, comments? Okay, some other SDO updates that you want to bring up? Well, maybe a, one quick comment on the, well, first of all, thanks for Samita for the update. I think it's very useful we get this kind of updates from the other organizations. And if any of you here in the call, you know, participate in other organizations could do a quick update on those organizations, I think that would be very helpful also for us in the future. That was something that has been requested by the directorate members before. So thanks a lot again, Samita. And maybe one one quick comment on the on the digital twins and modeling. I think there's two potential connections there. There's of course the network digital twin work at the network management research group um, that I think has a potential relation to some of the 5G Asia digital twin work. And then okay. also when it comes to SDF, we have been talking about um, doing conversions to AAS, the asset admin shell, about yeah. part of that, mm -hmm. um, which of course is a big thing in 5G Asia because the industry 4.0. So okay. there might some connection come, but that we haven't had a time to progress that work much okay. further. Yeah, if you there can, is, if sorry, you go, go to the 5G SCIO page and I can post up I can send you a pointer um, on the AAS work that the 5G ACIA has done uh, exactly for this uh, digital modeling reason. So um, the SDF or an MRG can take a look at that. Great, thanks. When, when they consider this work. Okay, thanks. Okay, great, thank you very much. Uh, additional SDOs input? Okay, then we can close the meeting if there is no further comments. I will stop the recording now.